Joy in a Manger with a melody by William James Kirkpatrick. One of the most beautiful of carols and one of the most popular here in the UK and it's very much the UK version this is. So this week here at the Curious Piano Teachers we're going to share with you uh, and give you all a very special resource built around this carol. So let me take you through it. Now, this is a resource that encourages students to work out the melody by ear and then possibly to notate it. And the illustrations, by the way, which are just beautiful, have been specially done by Graham Long Longdin. So thank you to Graham. Now, the resource is really adaptable and can be used at a whole variety of levels. Yesterday, for example, I was trying it out with an adult, an advanced adult student, um, who not only worked out the melody by ear, but also worked out some of the harmony. And we've also found that this has been a big hit with elementary and intermediate students. So, whilst my lights go a bit sparkly in the background, let me take you through some of the ideas. Now, this is what the students get and there are four pages and one for each phrase. So there's the first phrase and then we go on to the second phrase, the third phrase and finally the fourth phrase. And then to go with it, as you heard me play there, I've written a very simple accompaniment. Now you heard me play that hands together, but the idea is that the student will learn the melody and you, the teacher, can then play the accompaniment underneath. Just to add that extra little bit of harmony and um, enjoyment to it. So now let's look at some of these teaching ideas. What you get given is the rhythm of the melody and the words. So the first thing you could do is get them to work out what the time signature is and then to clap and count the rhythm. So obviously the time signature is going to be three, four, and having written that in at the start of that rhythm, um, they can then clap and count it. It's up to them whether they use metrical counting or whether you use rhythm names still or any other form of rhythm language, up to you. So you might count it out loud. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, Notice I started to sing it there, which I didn't really mean to do, so I, I wouldn't encourage that personally. Um, so that might be it with some students, that might be as far as you want to take it. Um, with others, you might decide that they're, actually they're ready for the next level. And here you can start to work out the pitch of the melody. Um, now the way I would do this, and you can see you're going to write the, uh, eventually we're going to write that in the little grey boxes. So the way I would do this is by asking them first of all to work out what the home note is, the do, the tonic, the first degree of the scale, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter what language you use there, except I wouldn't at this moment in time go into the letter names, okay? I just wouldn't go there yet. We're going to get there. Um, so I might sing the first phrase again, and if they know it, then ideally they'll sing it with me just to do and draw the on in the air or on the whiteboard the shape of the melody. Let's try that together, shall we? Just join in with me. Mm -hmm. Off we go. Do, 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 do. It only has to be very rough, a bit like my voice. Um, you don't need to be precise about it, or you might pattern. Do, 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 do. That's quite a, a, a popular thing to do. And then having done that, I might then ask them to see if they can identify uh, which of the words have the home note on. Well, no, actually, before that, I'm going to actually ask them to see if they can hear what the home note is. So I might sing again, and then they can sing back to me where they think the home note is. Let's try it. So, could you sing the home note? 
And ideally you're going to sing do. You'd be surprised how often the children do that. And even if they don't get it the first time, this is a little strategy you can use time after time after time. They very soon begin to listen in a different way for that homework. Do super. So whether it's do, that's number one. Next thing is to see if they can tell me which words that number one comes on. Have a listen this time. And hopefully they'll be able to hear it's going to be way in a manger. And I'm going to use that step-by-step -step approach to help them work out the rest of the, the uh, degrees of the scale for this first phrase. I've done the very first little bit, I think, here. Let's have a look at it. There it is. Five, one, one, two, three, one, one. And once again, I'm going to say that depending what level the student is at will determine how much help you need to give them in order for them to get there. That's for you to judge. So then comes the point where we can start to add the letter names. And again, I would ask them to find what the home note is on the piano. I might sing it again and then ask them to find it on the piano. I don't know whether I've stayed in tune. No, I thought I had. So there's the home note. And can you see if you can find that on the piano? And you know, the children often know vaguely where it is, but they're not, you know, they might go, oh no, it's that one. Um, and, and very soon their, their, their bandwidth, if you like, for finding these notes really, really does reduce. And we're not talking about children who've got you know, perfect pitch or anything like that. So keep working at that because it, it, it's a good skill for them to have. So then they found that that is the first note, the do, that F is do. The next thing I'm going to do is give them a little bit of a warm up. And I might use a whiteboard for this um, or get them to write it on a piece of paper. Let me show you what I've already done. So I might write out the degrees of the scale like this. Um, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even, and one at the top, even though it doesn't go that high. And then I'd actually ask the children probably to write in the degrees of the scale. This is depending on them already knowing F major. We've chosen F major because it's very suitable for children's voices. But of course, you can easily take it into C major. It's just a bit low to sing at that opening part. So I'm going to stick with F major. We can write it out on the whiteboard, or you could use the sulfur tree. That's for people who are curious members. Get them to think through first the melody. So I might show it to them like this. Let's see if I can get my fingers to point to the right place. Have a listen. Just check my tuning. Have a listen to one, two. Yeah, I might not go any further. And then get them to sing. Five, one, one, two, three, one, one. Then get them to come over here and do. Think again. Think it in the thinking voice. Off we go. Now with the letter names, do, do, off we go, C, F, F, G, A, F, F. And then, and only then, I would get them to play that on the piano. Now I've done a tiny little snippet, I know, and it might take a bit of time to get there. So that's up to you to again to judge how much time you want to spend on this. But that leads them to being able to play it really quite reliably the first time. And the look on a child or an adult's face when they work out the melody of a tune they know on an instrument is just, just magical in itself. Okay. As I say, you only have to do one phrase at a time. You could teach them the rest by rote 
or you could even send them home with the sheets, and I would hope you would, to finish it off. And of course they can also, if, if they're at the right level, they could then go on and notate it, or if they've written in all the letter names, then in their, in their home practice, then they could bring it back next week and you could help them start to notate it. So it's an activity that could take several weeks indeed to complete. Now judging what kind of level to take this to with each and every student is really one of the skills that we have to develop as teachers. I'm sure you've realised that already. And it's one of the joys of teaching, to be honest. I do hope that you really do enjoy using this resource and that it inspires you in your lessons to be both curious and creative because you know when you're curious and creative in your lessons that will inspire your students to keep learning and to give it, uh, keep the piano very close to themselves. If you're not yet a member of the Curious Piano Teachers do just scan on the, the QR code and that will take you to our membership page. We have a one month free trial which is ongoing so please do come over have a look and if you're curious to see what's inside just come and join us on our one, one month free trial. So many thanks for watching, have a good Christmas and see you soon. Bye for now.